It's up guys, Kurt Tashi here, and in today's scope, I want to talk about, you know, are you getting the most out of Periscope, okay? Now, the thing is, probably about 2-5% to 5 of people that are on Periscope are actually broadcasting scopes. The rest of everyone out there is just watching other people's scopes. Now, if you're one of those who is using Periscope to build your business, to build your brand, there's some things you really want to pay attention to and that you want to follow while when you're doing your scopes okay now first thing is you want to make sure that you have number one before you do a scope and these are a few tips I'm gonna give you and then at the end of this scope I'm gonna offer you guys a chance to get a hold of one of my free report that I put together on some even better tips even more tips on how to use Periscope so first of all you want to pick a topic before you start your scope okay and when you pick that topic, make sure you stick to that topic throughout your entire broadcast. Don't jump back and forth and don't go on a tangent. Stick to that topic because when someone goes and they find your scope on Periscope or they see it on Twitter and they go and they watch it, that means they're interested in what you said you're going to talk about. You know, so, if, for example, today I'm talking about you know, get, getting the most out of Periscope. If I decided to go on a tangent and start talking about, you know, um, playing golf or something like that, you know, this would not be viable scope, okay? Next, you want to make sure that get kind of a script down of what you're going to say, but since Periscope is pretty much an ad-lib type of platform, don't be strictly on a script like you're reading a sales letter, okay? Pretty much stick to the idea of what you're going to talk about, this way you're not, again, running off on a tangent and you're not doing a lot of ums and ahs and likes and uhs and, and sounding like you don't know what you're talking about. Another tip is make sure that you're speaking clearly. Okay, Sometimes we get you know a little bit excited and we start talking fast about a topic. You know, Especially if it's a topic we're passionate about, we tend to start talking fast and then we slur our words and you slur over our vowels and it sounds like a big old mushy mess so talk slowly and clearly not slow like a robot but slow enough to where people can understand you and that your words are separated so it doesn't become jumbled up when someone hears you All right. now I'm gonna go through a little few points here in my report over here and kinda highlight some things that you guys need to really well, I want you to focus on when you're focusing on making doing scopes on Periscope, okay. So, first of all, another thing is know where everything is on the app, okay. Android and app, Android and iOS are both set up differently. Make sure you understand where all the things are on your app before you start broadcasting. Make sure you know exactly you know how to react, how to respond to comments. Make sure you know exactly where to find things, you know, how to end the broadcast, how to start the broadcast, etc. Make sure you know where everything's at. Another tip too is also make sure that when you're doing your broadcast and writing your title, put some emojis or emoticons in your title. That's going to draw more attention in the Periscope and in the Twitter feed. As you see in mine, I put a little flame kind of a. I usually put like a flame or a, or a, or a check mark emoticon in mine to draw them more attention. Also, what you can do too is if you have a if you want someone to visit a website you want someone to visit. Um, after your broadcast or during your broadcast, put that website in the title, you know, as a full as a full HTTP, the entire URL. Now, this way, people can see that and they'll know where to go when you want to offer them something to check out. So let me go through my report here a little more. A um, couple more highlights. Make sure that. Avoid, and these are things I want you to avoid too. Um, first of all, don't use really short titles. Okay, that's a mistake people make. They often put really short titles, and the thing is, the title is not descriptive enough. People aren't going to watch your scope. The title should be at least three to five words, if not any, if that more. Okay, because if it's descriptive, people are going to see it. They're going to want to go and watch your scope. If it's not, they're going to skip it. Okay, and use hashtags. In your in your title, okay. Um, in fact, you can use hashtags in place of regular words. So, as example, um, in my title, 
I, my, my title was, Are You Getting the Most Out of Periscope? And I used hashtag Periscope. So now what's going to happen is when people search for hashtag Periscope in Twitter and on Periscope, my this broadcast here will come up and people will be able to watch the replay. Or they can watch the live stream if they see it before it ends. Um, another thing too is uh, avoid bad thumbnails. Now, Periscope by default will open the rear camera. Okay. Now, if you have an image at the on the front of the rear camera that's going that's related to your topic, that's fine. But for me personally, most of my scopes I use myself as a thumbnail. So what you can do is double at least on Android you can. I think it's probably the same on iOS. You double tap the screen, and it'll switch to the front-facing camera, so it'll show you as a thumbnail instead of something else. So you don't want to sit there and have the rear camera going and show like a dirty desktop or, or a pile of dirty laundry or your feet or something like that. You know, you want to make sure that you you have something that's being shown that people can relate to with the topic. And if you're trying to brand yourself, having your face as a thumbnail is really helpful. Now, also, avoid dead air, okay? Dead air meaning where you're not talking or speaking or doing anything. And a lot of times people do is they make the mistake when they're first beginning a Periscope, they wait for a live viewer to get on before they start talking. And that's a big mistake because when your replay comes on, let's say, that for example, that you know right now at this live scope, there's zero live viewers right now, okay? So if I decided to not talk at all, until a live viewer came on, there would be several minutes probably of just dead air on the replay. And that's really going to kill your reputation. You don't want that. You want to have, be speaking as if you're just doing a regular video. Okay? Don't wait for a live viewer to get on there. If a live viewer comes on, great. You know, greet them and, and welcome them. And if not, who cares? More people watch the replays anyway than the live streams. Okay? So if you have a video or a, a scope that's getting maybe zero or maybe one or two live viewers, don't stress because more people actually watch the replays of it. Now, let me go ahead and just a few more tips here before we close out the scope. I don't want to give all my tips in my, my report just yet. Um, There's certain ways you can promote things on Periscope. Um, the best thing to promote would be um, contests and giveaways and things like that. It's not really helpful to sell directly on Periscope if you have a product to sell. It's more helpful to actually just do a giveaway to build your list and build your your reputation, and then sell to your sell to your customers through your email list on the back end instead of directly on Periscope. Now you can do things like product demos on Periscope um, if your product fits that type of that type of category, and that will help you actually build reputation for your product and and build demand and, and build trust, but. Usually selling on Periscope directly doesn't always work because there's a limited amount of time to engage your audience and if you're not if you don't have enough of a live audience, it's really not gonna be very helpful. And there's different formats of scopes you can do. You can do interviews, live Q and A's, you can do um, tutorials and instructional instructional scopes such as I'm doing here. You know, a lot of different things you can do on Periscope. So, before, and without giving away all the tips in my report here, um, what I want you to do is go ahead and write in the title of the scope, there's a link. And that's going to take you to a page where you can get a copy of my free report that I put together called Periscope Profits. And if you can't see the link, it's www.successwithkurt.com and forward slash Periscope Profits. Go ahead and pick up that free report. That's going to give you a ton of tips to be to use to learn how to use Periscope and become better at using it to build your business and your brand. Now, this is especially helpful if you are a beginner on Periscope. Um, the first chapter of the book goes through the basics of using the app. You know where to find things. You know how to start a broadcast, how to stop a broadcast. You know what to do on the broadcast, etc. And the rest of it goes through different tips where you can actually improve your uh, branding and your ability to sell and build customer trust through your scopes. So guys, this is Kurt Tash. I want to thank you for watching today's live broadcast. 
if you stop down here in the middle of the broadcast, today we were talking about how to get the most out of Periscope, and I'm offering a free copy of my new report that I just put together called Periscope Profits. Again, to get that, go ahead and click the link in the title, and if you can't get to that link, it's over at www.successwithkurt.com forward slash Periscope Profits. Go ahead and grab that free report now, guys, and I will see you in tomorrow's broadcast. All right, talk soon.